All right, today's gonna be a good workout. I can't wait. We've got 30 seconds on, zero rest, like five seconds to change over, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. We're gonna do three rounds. We have three different pieces. So these are two upper body strength challenges today with a core endurance, and then we just finish it off with a bit of a burst. Let's start with our warm up. So the first thing to do is to just walk out, do a shoulder touch, walk back in five times. Let's get started. So this being our warm up, you want to go at any pace that feels good for you. And again, as I always say, bend your knees a lot and or go to your knees. It's totally up to you. Feel out your workout. There's no need to make this difficult off the start. This is number four. Just touching, touching, walk it back in. One more. So if you are doing this from a seated position, you could just be stretching out your arms. Anything that feels good to get you started. Okay, we're gonna go right back down to the floor and we're going into just a bird dog exchange. So you set up a nice strong tabletop, zip up that belly, release one arm, one foot, extend away a lot. The idea is to change, watch your balance, squeeze the glutes, and a beep, I guess aware, just sort of awareness is difficult to say because people sometimes don't know what am I supposed to be aware of? What do you mean? Something bad gonna happen? No, just bring your mind to your back. You wanna watch that you're not dropping your back and arching. So you're zipping up that core, keeping it strong, and keep the glute tight while you extend the arm. This is number five, and we take a break. We're gonna to go to our tummy. We're gonna be lifting our arms up. We're gonna lift our head, pull and retract our spine, release back down. Five times to just activate that posterior chain. That's your backside. Okay, so head is down. We lift up, we retract, and then we lower back down. Keep going, up, and lower back down. You could do this standing up, just so that you're activating those back muscles. We've got a lot of back today and shoulders, good. And that was number five. Let's just push up. Maybe you wanna go into a little bit of a child's pose just to release your back muscles first. And then we're coming up. Good job. All right, so you can choose. Either you're using dumbbells or you're not. Today I've chosen eights and twelves, but you can completely choose whatever works for you. No weights, which means you're using a pump. Have a sip of water. I got my lovely Perler Project. Up. I didn't bring my glass out today. All right, so the first one is a half kneeling press. So either you're using a dumbbell or you're not, you're gonna have that hand up, same side as the front leg, opposite hand is out to the side, and or keep it on your waist, and we're powering that up for 30 seconds. We'll switch legs, switch hands, power it up for 30 seconds. Then we're standing up. You could choose a little heavier here, go at the same weight. That's where I've got the 12s and we're doing a two arm row, standing. Okay, again, this could be seated. You could be doing a press from seated. You could also be doing a two arm row and no weights, it's up to you. All right, clock is set. Let's get ready, grab your weight, go into your kneeling position and go. So 30 seconds on that clock. No need to hurry, just me trying to get in position. All right, so we're bringing that arm up. Again, so that that bicep grazes the ear a little bit. 30 seconds on one side, as I mentioned earlier, limited rest. So we've got five seconds to change over. Here you wanna be breathing, get lots of oxygen going into that body. Stay nice and tall, good. Change sides, other foot in front, other hand out to the side. Let's rack it to our shoulder. And here's where we start to think. We're going on a journey. We haven't done this 30-30 yet. So this is a new journey for us, learning how our body's going to adapt, how it's gonna feel. We won't have any breaks, so we're working on some endurance here. Upper body strength. Don't let your weakness settle in, we say. Push through it. Power every single movement that you make. All right, we've got five seconds to set up. I'm gonna pick up a little heavier for myself and we're going into a bent over row. So as you're rowing, 
Your knees are soft, shoulder width apart. Elbows come up and power behind you. If for any reason you start to feel, oh, this is really challenging my low back. As I've mentioned before, try to sit in those hips. Dig into your heels. Send that weight slightly backwards as you pull. All right, we're going back to our first move with, for me, my right knee in front whoop, and pressing. Oh, here's where our body starts to say, what is going on? Maybe you feel a little bit wobbly. Hone in on where you're maybe feeling some type of weakness. Are you collapsing in the hip? Are you leaning forward too much? Sticking the opposite hip up, hip up, out. <laughs> you wanna keep it tall. Chin should be parallel to the ground. If I'm not looking up and I'm not looking down, I'm looking straight out in front of me. Woo, feeling that burn, set it up. Here we go. Find a pace that works for you. A pace that you're somewhat comfortable with. So it's like conserving energy in your car as we take this drive, as we map out this new feeling in our body with that limited rest. The idea is to keep going. So even if I slow down and rest here and press, rest and press, that's fine. Just as long as you keep building up that endurance, that amount of time that the body can be under tension and still working. Here's where our shoulders want to be. You want to be kind of looking slightly forward. What I mean by that is you're not forward into a flat back. That will really pull on that low back. You want to be a bit of an angle. Drive the elbows back. When you let them go down, you pull from that bottom point. You could rest, slow it down, pull, and breathe. All right, round three. Oh, I love these workouts. Feels like they go so much faster. All right, now, with your palm, you don't want to be fully turned out here. It's not like you're holding out a stop sign saying, stop. It's slightly turned in. That way, you protect your shoulder, okay? You need to keep the shoulder safe. You have little tiny sacs, brachials in your shoulder. We don't want to pinch them, or we end up with like a rotator cuff problem and or injury. Ooh, that's getting heavy. Ugh. Good job. Round three. Oh my goodness. Now, as I'm extending, I'm breathing out. So up and out. Inhale as you go down, match your breath. A lot of the talking that I do allows me to breathe properly. Some people say, how do you work out and talk? Well, <laughs> it's a trick. It actually allows me to keep breathing as well. Smile. Oh, even though you feel like maybe there's nothing to smile about right now. Smile because you're doing something and smile because it actually makes you breathe. Oh, those are done. Okay, slightly turn in those palms, then the elbows drive back. The other thing you wanna prevent yourself from doing is swinging. We don't wanna really swing from the hips, I'm exaggerating, but you wanna lock in, ground. The low body's not doing much, okay? Just the upper body, pull back. These are your pulley muscles. They're so important. When we get into our next round, we're gonna be working with a bit of an imbalance again. And you'll feel it there, you did it. Woo! Strength circuit number one, done. Now we rest. Okay, lots of water. Breathe. Ah, oh, that feels good. And it tastes good. Feels good coming down. And it tastes good. Water always tastes better for some reason when we're working out. Okay, so we're going into a standing staggered fly. Single arm. We're gonna keep one hand on the knee. We've done a row. Now we're doing a fly. A fly is a little harder, okay? So you wanna go a little lighter. If I was using, say, a 15 for my row, I'm actually going to an eight for my fly. Because when a lever, your arm, is further away from your body, it's harder. So we're gonna do right arm, left arm. Drop quickly from our knees, or you could choose straight leg. I'm gonna really focus on my triceps here. 
So tucking the elbows right into the sides, pinning them in, and trying to draw my body in one straight board. Let's get ready. 30 seconds again, three rounds, three exercises. Right fly, left fly, tricep push-ups. Ready? Here we go, and begin. Okay, so set up that fly, staggered stance. One foot in front, one foot slightly behind. Now you may like to go to a tiptoe on that back foot. I haven't shown you a lot of the seated work, but I'm sure you can imagine here, if I'm sitting either with a dumbbell or my hand, or even standing and just using my arm, you got it. You're bang on, okay? Keep going every second count. Okay, change sides. Okay, back tall. Here we go. Out to the side. Now, we tend to all have one side stronger than the other. This is, for me, my weaker side. I'm right hand dominant. So my left, oh, I feel it. I feel it from the coordination perspective, but I also feel it from a wobble in my body. So in my body, I'm stabilizing a lot with my core. Don't kid yourself. Every exercise has core in it. So if you don't think you're isolating core all the time, you are. It's the tree, right? Hands together. So the conversation around the tree is, if the tree trunk isn't strong, how would the limbs be strong? So we're on a little journey here, driving through the country, we're looking at all these beautiful trees. Our core is the tree trunk, strong. So we can look at those beautiful leaves hanging from the limbs. You like it? All right, so keep that tree trunk strong, especially while you're doing these push-ups. And we're moving on back to the beginning. Round two, arm goes out to the side. Next cue, watch that you don't rotate the whole body, all right? So only my arm is lifting to the side and it doesn't need to go very high. Look in your peripheral vision and see if you can still see that dumbbell out to the side. Or if you're lifting your hand, see that you can see that hand. Even if you're sitting down, it's very important because the other ways that you don't see it, that means you're hyperextending. That means you're using your neck muscles possibly. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This is one of my favorites. But every time I feel that wobble on my left side, I am adjusting. You may not see it, but I wiggle my feet around. I make my base of support control and support me. I let my whole body get a workout, including my ankles, my toes. If you're grabbing them with your toes in your shoes, be careful, relax the toes. Sit into the heels as much as you can. How are we doing? I feel good. So as I come down, if I was to tuck my chin in or stick my head forward, that's not gonna get me any lower, okay? Keep that chin back, slightly look up, to maybe the top of your mat. That will allow you to truly use those arms. Oh my goodness, these are getting hard. Oh, maybe I'll get one more in. I take a break. I tap out, good. I wanted time to stand up anyways. And breathe. Okay, here we go. Now, one foot's behind me on the floor. But as I mentioned before, you could go to a toe. It's up to you how you want to feel in that base. My base is my legs. So I'm feeling the standing leg. I'm actually feeling it right into the glute. That's the butt cheek of that leg. So I'm in a bit of a forward and I'm using that hand to support me. You could even use a bench here. However, the height of this bench for me is too low. So, you know, go to a wall. I could use the bike. You could use a high chair. Um, but for me, this is working. All right, I'm gonna dig deep. I'm going to my toe on that back foot now. I'm gonna gaze slightly forward. Whew. Last set, best set we say. I love it. Keep that knee and that elbow soft. Nothing's locked out here. Whew. Breathe, good. Oh, I'm glad I dressed for this today. I knew I'd be hot. Oh, last set of tricep push-ups. Okay, so 
keeping in mind, I'm getting a bit tired. There's a possibility I'm gonna bend my elbows only to where I don't break my form. Perhaps I challenge myself. I slow down, I push up. A push up's all about that push. Okay, so make sure you're aware that you rest going down in a sense, and you don't rest completely. You don't want to land on your face. However, the option is to be on a bench, or the option is to be on a wall. We did it! Three rounds! Oh, I hardly got a chance to explain those options. Okay, we are done the upper strength. We're moving into the core. Okay, I'm gonna choose my six for this. You don't need to wait at all, or maybe I'm gonna go a little heavier. Totally up to you. All right, so we're doing a hinging wood chop, half knee, okay? Right side, then left side. Then we're sitting on our bum and we're doing a Russian twist. Okay, so what I mean by that is we're going to bring that weight back, chop it up, bring it back, chop it up. We're working that core, the Russian twist, we're seated, and I'll show you that as we go through it. Get ready to hinge and chop. Go! Okay, so I come back, bring it slightly forward, up. Breathe out on the up. We're slightly restricting the diaphragm because we're twisting, so the breath might be a little caught. And maybe you get halfway through this and you want to go down and wait, or perhaps you go, hmm, let me try a little heavier. It's okay to test out some of these moves. As I've mentioned before, if you do go down or up, specifically you change to go up, if you do this workout again, you probably should record it and repeat the same weight each time. That'll keep you consistent because you've got to match that weight. Oh, breathe. Up, bring it down, up. And I'm moving with this, okay? Don't be rigid. It's not good for your back. Get into it. Chop. Beautiful, okay. The Russian twist can be done with a weight or not. Let's have our feet down. Now, we're twisting. I'm slightly, slightly, pelvic tilting in my core. That keeps my abs engaged. So what I'm not doing is sticking my chest out. Oh, that hurts my back. Okay, so lean back. Focus on that core, bringing you from one side to the other side. If you're not using weight, you're touching, touching. You could be sitting taller. Totally up to you. All right, back to our wood chop. So we're coming back and we're throwing it up. Good. Focus on your core and your hips moving as one. Use them or lose them. Up. And the neck. Soften your jaw. Smile. It will make you soften. It will make you breathe. Maybe in the right spot. Follow your body's lead here. Okay, so we're kind of getting towards the end. Our journey is almost over. We'll almost get where we want to be. Guess where we're aiming to go or where we want to arrive at the end. And what that means is being able to keep moving in any way we can. If you do slow down, that's okay. Take your rest. Swing it up. Take your rest. Swing it up. Take your rest. All you're trying to do is get to the end. Okay? We're working on your endurance here. Ugh. Nicely done. Oh my goodness. Russian twist. Okay, so another option is we could lift up a foot. Okay? So it's up to you. I'm going to keep my foot up for about 15 seconds. Watch that clock. So I've got five seconds left. Then I'm going to pick up the other foot. I'm just working sort of one imbalance at a time. I forgot to change. <laughs> Short term memory. It's not good. We only have one more round left. Then our finisher, and we're done. Ooh, good job. All right, back to the wind shots. Set it up. No time for a real break today. As I said, 
go on a little journey. A long car ride in a sense, only 30 minutes, but this is your 30 minutes. So I love about working out, this is my time. Uh, uninterrupted, I shut my phone off, I turn off everything that could be a distraction. Maybe it's even my mind. I just get in my body, try to think about what's going on in there. A little evaluation. What is achy? Honestly, almost every day of my whole life, there is something that is tweaked. Not in a bad way. If it's an injury, I know, and I need to stop and or take a break. But I do know when I have little tight spots, little things yelling at me, it allows me to get more mindful about either my stretching, my meditation, or kind of pulling back on my workout. Doesn't mean I don't do a workout, just means I pull back a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do one foot up personally, 10 seconds. I'm gonna end this with two feet hovering off the ground for 10 seconds. <sighs> what have I committed to? Change feet. I've committed to staying on track, watching the clock. Oh, here we go, two feet, I'm going for it. All right, so they wanna sway a little bit, that's okay. They're allowed to move a little bit, but I wanna keep those feet together. That's what I'm aiming for right now. Oh, we did it. At least we did the strength. So we've done two upper body strengths, one core endurance. Now for our climbers. Yeah, climbers. That's our finisher today. So with a climber, you can use a bench, or if you can just go straight to the floor, you could even just do a high knee march. Totally up to you. I'm getting rid of this clock at this point. Don't need it. We've got climbers for 20 seconds. We have a 20 second break, thank goodness. And 20 seconds on, break 20 seconds on, you know the drill. All right, so climbers, if you're on a bench, you can run it here on the bench, or your hands are on the floor. You can even go to a wall, whatever. Are you ready? I am. I'll do the bench first. It's not a cop out, I just have for another space back here. Here we go. Run. 20 seconds. I tend to forget to shut that clock off for some reason. All right, so I'm keeping my core tight. Ignore the bell. I'm so sorry. Just listen for my voice to say stop. Okay, and stop. Take a break. Breathe. We don't have a lot of time here, but it's okay. I just want to go to the floor for a little bit. I'll move the bench out of the way. Five more seconds. Big breath. Hit it right now. Go. Run. Excellent work. Keep going. Ignore that bell. How's our time? I'm going to take a look. Ah, yes. Okay. Ready? Five. Stay over your hands. Two and one. Take a knee. Breathe. Awesome. We only have one more. What a great work. I'm so sweaty. Okay, last one. Oh, we got five seconds. Not even. I'm going back to the bench. I'm tired. Here we go. Set it up and run. Head down. Lots of length in your spine. Tummy and core are tight. Hips are low. I feel like those beeps are just music to me now. I'm gonna hear them in my sleep. Well, I always say I feel like I hear beeps in my sleep. Three, two, one, and done. That's cheering. All right, cool down. Just open up that chest. Take a breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. That was amazing. Hands on your knees. Just twist out that spine. Lock out that elbow. Close your eyes if you want to. Taking care of yourself is so important, I know. Oh, so what do they say, cliche? But it is, it feels so good when you're done. There's nothing like it. I know, it sounds crazy, but that's my truth anyways. All right, I'm going to round up my belly and then I'm gonna stick out my chest. So what I'm doing here is I'm scooping up 
and I'm extending my spine. So I'm just doing a standing cat cow to loosen up. One more for bed lap. And release. Good. Come on out slowly. Just a quick head stretch here in the neck. How do you feel? Pretty good, huh? All right, change sides slowly. Take your time. One hand is reaching down. We're just stretching here. Oh, feels great. You did great. I did great. We did great together. All right, let it go. All right. Thank you so much. That was a great workout. I hope you feel amazing. Have a great day. Bye.